Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the FEU Career and Placement Office pre employment preparation talk or pep talk webinar series for the first semester of school year 2021 to 2022. I'm sure for the regular pep talk viewers, uh, you know me already, but those watching us for the first time, this is uh, Ron Gascon, the coordinator of FEU Career and Placement Office or CAPO. And I will be your MC and moderator for this afternoon's webinar. Pep Talk is a regular virtual series designed to prepare the students for employment by equipping them with the necessary knowledge through talks focusing on various topics delivered by industry professionals and experts. And on your screens now, you can see our previous Pep Talk webinars conducted from the previous semesters up to the present. You may uh, rewatch them at your most convenient time at the Career and Placement official Facebook page and at the FEU YouTube channel. Today's webinar is also being live streamed via Microsoft Teams and both the FEU and CAPOS official Facebook pages. To participate in our question and answer segment, you may submit your comments and questions anytime by posting at our conversation page. It can be found at the right side of your screen if you're using a desktop or at the live Q&A tab if you are using a mobile phone or other portable device. For our viewers watching through the FEU live stream, we encourage you to engage with us by posting your questions as well or your reactions on the comment section. We really anticipate your participation as we progress in our webinar. In a competitive, technology-driven and skills-reliant 21st century, finding the perfect job seems to be a dream that we chase into reality. Often, fresh graduates would look for a job for the sake of immersion and work experience as they develop their career. In the process of job application, the challenges immediately start as soon as you write your resume and job application letter. It is followed by understanding in which industry or company your sets of skills would be of perfect fit. Once pre-selected, job candidates will undergo the most important interview, the initial screening. Proper grooming must be also be carefully considered as a reflection of your confidence and professionalism. How can we effectively prepare ourselves as we enter the world of work? How can we be more confident in hunting a job now that most companies have migrated to a digital workplace? How can we confidently grab that job? FEO Capo presents its free employment talk webinar titled Grab That Job, How to, Success, to Be Successful in Job Interview, Resume Writing, and Proper Grooming. This webinar episode is also brought to you by FEU Capo in cooperation with our digital media partner, the Marketing and Communication Office. Stay tuned as we discover more how we can effectively develop our job hunting skills from our pep talk resource speaker for today. Just a reminder, please make sure that you're to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Let us maximize our time by learning from today's webinar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the opening remarks and to look for a speaker, may I call on the Director of the Rear and Placement Office, Ms. Maria Carmencita Babes Suva Alfonso. Hi, Ma'am Babes. Good afternoon. The virtual floor is yours. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello po. Struggle ang uh, internet this afternoon. And I would like to apologize, no? Uh, medyo, ano talaga, medyo challenging. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, as I said, um, Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. You know, a year ago, when pandemic came, we were all aghast, uh, and it felt like our world stopped. Everything changed, you no, know, especially in school, the way we do things from on-site to off-site or online classes, to and from face-to-face -to, -face to online activities and online uh, school transactions. You no, know? you, you. I'm sure some of you haven't even seen the. Um, the campus, no, since you started, medyo nag start pandemic. So, and for the rest, no, it's been a while since you last um, went to school, no. Well, it felt like our world stopped. We at Capo asked ourselves, what can we do? 
Shall we wait for things to get better? But why wait for good things to happen when we can make it happen now? Hence the recalibration and migration of our activities to be able to continue on providing opportunities for you, our dear students. No? Since then, the FEU Career and Placement Office or CAPO has successfully run a series of webinars to orient our students the basics of working, finding a job, essential know-how on entrepreneurship, and even uh, gaining higher studies in pursuit of their career goals amidst, of, uh, amidst the new normal. We have also successfully rolled out all other online activities designed to help prepare our internship and graduating students no, for the new world of work. Uh, the online mock interview with coaching, the online exclusive recruitment, the online uh, recruitment exclusive for Tamaraus or Oretams, which is the FEU's uh, virtual job fair. Uh, of course, we have the student exposure to partner organizations um, paired with virtual tour. And then the Young Leaders Educational Dialogue, or ULEAD, to name a few. Now, let me show you a short video clip of um, Kapo's activities uh, the previous months. Um, video, please, Ms. Kat. Thank you. semester's activities, please check out our event posters and calendar of activities. We shall be posting this in the official FEU social media sites and canvas. Um, as we provide a holistic approach in our students' career development, we continue to offer meaningful activities and programs to help prepare and guide them in their life design. Uh, whether they want to have a successful career, build their own empire, or become a freelance professional to thrive in the new normal. And for today's episode titled Grab That Job, how to be successful in job interview, resume writing, and proper grooming, we will discover more about how we can develop our, uh, our job application skills and get hired uh, in that dream job. This pep talk topic today is very relevant as we continue to adjust and thrive in this new normal, um, normal new normal way of doing things not only in school, but in the long term, in the world of work as well. On that note, I would like to end uh, with my usual reminder. While it is uh, not going to be easy to sort out the challenges in this new situation that we are in, uh, always remember our mantra, no? be brave, because Tamaraos have always been resilient to whatever comes our way. Please always remember that. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our re resource speaker, She's an experienced communication and public relations executive with proven success in developing and implementing public relations, public information, and marketing campaigns, as well as crisis communication strategies for multiple channels across various stakeholder touch points. She graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and finished her Master of Arts in Communication, major in communication research at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. In 2015, she was a class valedictorian in, of the SSS-sponsored um, Middle Management Development Program conducted by the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. She has worked for both government, private, and international organizations, having served the DOLE, or Department of Labor and Employment, St. Luke's Medical Center, um, government Service Insurance System, or GSIS, and the International Organization for Migration of the United Nations. She was the Vice President for Public Affairs of uh, SSS, Social Security System, before her early retirement in government two years ago. Currently, she is the Managing Director of Brown Bag Communications of Page One, the most awarded PR agency in the Philippines with more than 200 international and local awards. Let me 
she is on her second term as the vice president uh, for intern internal of the Public Relations Society of the Philippines and chairperson of the 57th Anvil Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen, Miss Luisa, or uh, commonly uh, known as uh, Louis Sebastian. Ma'am Louis, um, thank you for being here. The virtual the virtual floor is yours. Ayan, Ma'am Louis, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ma'am Babe, Sir Rondell. Thank you, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be with your students again. Um, yes, internet is quite uh, challenging these days, erratic and all, but we're ha I'm happy, I'm happy to be here with you all. And I really hope I can see all of you guys when we do face-to-face uh, -face activities again. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. How are you guys? Yeah. Can you see my screen already? Not yet. Uh, not yet po, ma'am. Not Sige yet. Lang, ma Sige. Okay, I have to close it again and then open it from the desktop first. Yan ang mga ano natin. Challenges. <laughs> the challenges. Mga, mga to... titas of Manila. <laughs> yes. I used to do these um, sessions with I think about three uh, schools already before the pandemic struck. So bear with me if this is kind of new in terms of online. That's why I also adopted it to um, online uh, information. So yeah. Ang mga lola, nawawala. Sikat na. Yeah, can you see my screen na? Yes, perfect. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Kailangan ano eh? Kailangan magising ko kayo. Kailangan makinig kayo sa. And I hope that yun yas sinabi ng ni Mam Babes, having had um twenty five years more than twenty five years of experience in my work, I started as an entry level um employee, and then up to a C-suite uh, position, ibig sabihin ng C-suite and it's an executive. So, how how do we grab that job? And ako, um, I'm going to share with you my personal experiences. I also worked with HR before. She mentioned about St. Luke's Medical Center. So, I also tried to venture into other areas other than uh, PR and communications because Really, I wanted to expand my competencies. And so there are three questions today that we are all going to answer. So number one is how do you stand out in an online job interview? I emphasize online, but you know, uh, there's really not much difference between an online interview and a face-to-face -face interviews. You have to be able to capture the um, attention of your interviewer and you have to really be the top choice for the position. So how do you do that? That's our first question for today. The second question is what are the do's and don'ts in writing a resume? So Mom Babes mentioned a while ago that I am a um, journalist and graduate. So my core competence really is writing. So at uh, habang tumatanda ka, yung pagsusulat ay mas sinasabing mas nagiging bihasa ka dahil dapat sa edad na ito, mas marami ka nang naisulat. So, I'm telling you this in a way that I'm showing you that your competences, your competencies in communication should be able to, you should be able to expand it in a span of time. So, whether you speak in straight Filipino or you you speak uh, fluent English, you have, these are competencies and these are things that you have to learn whether verbally or in writing. So number thir thir third question is how do you dress to impress during a job interview? So right now I'm going to focus again on uh, dressing for Zoom or online interviews, but I will have to touch on um, other uh, areas or how to dress yourselves during a formal face-to-face -face interview because eventually you will be doing that in the future. So, first question. 
Ito, di ba? Lahat tayo mahilig sa mga hugot lines, di ba? <laughs> so, job interviews are like first dates. So, when you get that flutter in your stomach, when you get so excited to something, sometimes you do a lot of blunders when you talk. Di ba? That's usually how you feel and how you react during a first date. And job interviews are like that. Uh, good impressions count. Awkwardness, of course, can occur. And outcomes are unpredictable. Whether you're going to have a second date and in the case of a job interview, whether you're going to grab that job. So, I'm here to give you 10 ways or 10 tips, practical tips, on how you can grab that job by doing very well in your job interview. Okay, so what's the first? This is an online setup. So, in any interview, in any meeting, be background conscious. So, I opted to use my white background right now. I have natural lighting in my room because these are important elements to have a clear view of from your employers, from your interviewer side. So, I also chose a dark colored shirt to be able to contrast with my background, which is white. But if you don't have any uh, white background, for example, or a clear background, you can opt to have this virtual backgrounds. Now, these are my personal choices. There are plants and there are books. Of all the um, available virtual backgrounds, free online right now. Why did I choose this? Because one, I like plants. Number two, I devote a lot of my time reading. So it has been a habit of ours in the family to, to read before you sleep. <laughs> so, so in the same manner that the background could be a springboard for your interview during a, during a job interview, I like plants. And um, your interviewer could be a plantita too. So what I'm saying is that your background could also be a part of your house if you do not have like a white wall like mine. And it will exude, it will show much, um, it will show uh, your personality, for example, or a little snippet of what you stand for or what are your hobbies or or what are the other things that you're interested in. So the background is not just a background during a job interview. One, it can be a springboard for discussion so it can lighten up the mood between you and the interviewer so that the interview becomes uh, uh, warm, uh, full of warmth in the um, entire discussion. So it can also show your personality. So also, make sure that there are no, oh, I, I remembered interviewing an intern. <laughs> there was a man walking, uh, it, it turns out it, it was his father who walked uh, shirtless <laughs> at the background. So, be very conscious and um, just make sure that all your household members are aware that you have a job interview and if there could be some, um, uh, put a hold in your household when you do the online job interview. Okay, so that's number one. Be conscious of your virtual background. Number two, ito, this, I'm gonna kind of like, because I know you did some mock-up interview coaching before, so I'm going to dwell on some aspects that, uh, for example, in my case, I've handled some of your uh, graduates before or the placement program, but I've not really delved into this uh, topic, selecting professional attire by focusing on your colors. Okay. Why blue? Okay, so again, I'm going to put a background to pala. Ma uh, Mom Babes mentioned that I used to be the um, uh, Vice President for Public Affairs of SSS and part of my job at that time was 
as, as a spokesperson of SSS, so you can probably Google me and see what I wore during those days when I did my interviews. So the color that I chose for every interview, regard, uh, for every interview, or for every face-to-face -face interaction with either our members or our pensioners would depend on the topic at hand. So for a job interview, for example, an, an applicant who's wearing blue would show um, that he or she is trustworthy, that he or she is credible because it's light in the eyes. So in my past, if I'm going to, for example, as it says, was in a controversy and uh, I would, for example, talk with pensioners who were asking for um, increase in pension at the time. I would choose a lighter blue so that I come in peace. So blue would be a good color for an entry uh, applicant. So for somebody who's working and then, for example, you are going to apply in a food manufacturing industry. So blue is a nice color to start with okay the gray the gray color naman exudes like confidence also you are confident but yet approachable so it's not in the it's not black black is actually for um management and leadership positions and if you are actually applying for a conservative industry for example um finance banking these are conservative industries and they want colors that are muted so that those colors are gray black and browns so muted in a sense that you do not catch attention because um, again uh, management leadership are colors for mid-level uh, professionals and then gray naman it means that you are confident enough but yet approachable so again um, you choose your colors according to the industry or uh, where you want to be part of. Now, white. White is a perfect color for an inside shirt. As you can see in the photo, um, and as you can see as what I'm wearing, it's a good com uh, contrast color. And um, for an online interview, it's very clean. Okay, so wear white as an inside shirt. Uh, I mentioned uh, brown earlier. Uh, brown means um, reliable, actually, but but uh, you should not wear brown if uh, you're applying, for example, um, in in creatives, for example, in an ad agency, because it does not really show your modern or your being progressive, and then you're young. So um, I wouldn't recommend uh, the brown color for young entrants to industries. R the red naman, the red exudes power, aggression. So um, I remember wearing red, uh, in a, uh, wearing red in a sea of black uh, colors when I, uh, when I was in the last, panel interview for my job at SSS. You know, SSS is a government-owned controlled corporation. It's a finance institution. So I wanted to make sure that they will recognize me as the one who's going to handle public affairs. One has to be creative, um, powerful. So I came, so everybody, all the other, all the other applicants for other positions in operations, in finance, were all wearing a gray, black, brown colors, and I was the only red. I was the only one in red, and it immediately, they immediately, even the secretariat knew that I was the one who's, who was an applicant for the um, public affairs position. So, because people also know these kinds of um, uh, meaning of colors for uh, any event, for any activity. So HR people are aware of uh, the right attire for a certain position for specific industries. So, but, but if you want to be playful, you can put a dash of red, uh, for example, like uh, what I'm wearing right now, a brooch. It can also be a springboard for discussion or a scarf that can be placed inside your blazer just to show uh, about your vibrancy. 
Okay. Yellow. Yellow is a color of happiness and optimism. So anything sunshine, diba? you associate with yellow. So um, if you are applying, for example, in ad agencies or marketing, yellow would be a nice color to show that you are right for the job. I remember, um, this is nothing to do with professional attires, but I hope you're taking down some notes because I'm going to jump a little bit from time to time whenever I remember something that will help you in your uh, job interviews. There was one job interview where I was asked, if you are blind, and uh, if you are blind, and you're going to explain to somebody. Ah, no, no, no. You are interviewing somebody who's blind. But you have to explain to that person uh, yellow. So how do you show um, the color yellow to um, visually impaired? visually impaired individual and I answered think of uh, the warmth of the sun on your face and then think or feel the warmth of your mom's embrace and that is the color yellow. So imagine being asked like that on the spot during a job interview with a panel of um, interviewers. So I'm just showing you that the colors are very important as well to study not only in terms of your professional attire, but in terms of thinking of answering questions during your job interview because these colors, they actually stand for something. They represent something. Okay, what is the color green? If you are applying for, uh, for example, a safety position and health, a health position, a medical allied uh, position, the color green is associated in those industries. So it will be good if you wear colors along that line during a job interview in that field. It's also the color of youth. So you can you can wear these colors if you are an entrant, a new applicant to a uh, medical field, for example. So orange and purple just what is like red. So it's playful. It's a happiness to the max. So you can play with that if you are actually aspiring for, uh, for example, a graphics uh, artist position or a writer for a lifestyle magazine or for a uh, column, uh, for example, it's like website, the right? yung bloggers, um, editors of websites, for example, of lifestyle blogs and that, then you can venture into wearing orange purple during your online job interview. So that's it. That's how you select or choose your colors for your professional attire when you do your online job interview or your face-to-face -face job interviews. Now for the third one, again, check sound and video. Do not forget to ask your interviewer what platform they are going to use because not everybody uses Zoom. Some use MS Teams. Some are in Google Chats. Uh, so you have to be familiar with the platform before you do the job interview. And don't forget to ask your interviewer what platform you study it before you venture, before you do the actual interview. So you are much better at me in terms of technology, I'm sure. Sometimes I ask also my sons to navigate the different online platforms. But in your case, this is very important. That's why before any job interview, you practice a day before and you go online 20 minutes before the online job interview. Never ever be late. So and make sure that the sound and the video are very clear, okay? So you can probably ask somebody to log in, for example, a Zoom, in, uh, Zoom platform, and then you check 
among your friend and you whether the sound and the video are clear. Okay. What's the fourth one? Can you do positive body language when you do your virtual job interview? My answer is yes. Yes. Positive body language is very important anywhere, whether it's online or offline. So whether it's nodding your head, maintaining eye contact, smiling genuinely or leaning forward to show interest on in what the interviewer is saying those are very important that you if you notice i am using my hands when i want to emphasize something that's also okay um in the same manner that uh, when you frown <laughs> during a job interview that the, the interviewer can easily see that so be very conscious of your body language even during online job interviews. Uh, sloppy, sloppy, um, uh, the way this, this can show being sloppy during a job interview. So might as well uh, sit up straight, look, look into the camera of the laptop, not on the screen so that your eyes are always at level. In my case, um, it's okay for me if somebody, for example, um, looks uh, afar for um, for a second, for for a second or two or three before answering a question. That's acceptable because that shows you are thinking first before you speak, but not too long, of course. But uh, pausing when you are talking means you are thinking consciously of what you're going to say during the job interview. So it reflects much of your personality too. So that's good. So practice your positive body language. What does that mean? Uh, do not frown. Alam mo yung taas kilay, hindi yan pwede sa job interview. So wag din poker face. So you have to be able to exude that energy during a job interview. Okay. Oh. What's the fifth? What's the fifth tip? Engage the interviewer. Uh, show during a job interview, it's not just about you. It's also about the interviewer. So make sure that you give time to the interviewer to say something about his or her company. That way, the conversation becomes mutual. You can ask uh, questions during a job interview. That's that's okay. Uh, for example, uh, one of the questions could be um, because the interviewer will always ask, "Do you have any questions?" And if you have questions, I might personally, in my experience, I appreciate that because that means you really came prepared for the interview, that you are interested in the work in the company that you even went to the extent of preparing questions. So in the case of uh, engaging an interviewer, you can ask, uh, how do you measure the performance of your uh, employees? That's a question that you ask the interviewer, but at the same time shows that you are very uh, conscious of how a, an individual is evaluated based on performance, competencies, skills at work. So that's a very good question. Um, you can also ask about um, career development. Uh, you can you can say that I'm uh, because usually the question is how do you see your, how do you see yourself three to five years from now? That's a standard question during a job interview. But to answer that in such a way that can also be coming from the interviewer is to shift the question into something like I see uh, I see myself uh, working still for this company uh, three to five years from now and um, really I'm very interested to make a career in this company I've studied your company uh, I'm very impressed with, how, uh, with the career progression of uh, people here. I know of some people here working already and um, 
I am amazed at their career progression. I would really love to um, know more about your career development for uh, new uh, employees. So things like those you can actually ask to, to engage your interviewer, but never, never ask about salary. Please, <laughs> that's not uh, a question to ask during an interview, especially uh, during a first uh, level interview. You only ask about that after they have, uh, the HR person will actually ask, ask you about it. Uh, what range of salary are you looking at? Then that's the only time that you will be discussing compensation. Okay. So number six. Okay. So we're down five on the sixth is, of course, prepare, prepare, prepare. Never ever go to a job interview without researching about the company. Ask the uh, interviewer who who are the people who you're going uh, who's going to interview you and then um, look at them in social media uh, look at their website uh, study their online um, presence and then look at the news if there are news about this company and uh, even the receptionist you know um, during face-to-face uh, -face interviews, it's very important to know who the receptionist is. So this person guides you all throughout. The, uh, sometimes you have to look for the receptionist to be able to go uh, to the office of whoever is going to interview you. So that's also a tip to look for who the reception is. And then um, you come to the interview with all this information and uh, that's part of being prepared for the interview. Okay, number seven is know the 20 facts about you. Okay, why is this included? There will, there are sometimes lull during an interview and it's an opportunity for you to show uh, 20 facts about you, whether it's about you being uh, good in terms of communication, whether it's about a value, a character. Uh, you have to know the 20 facts about you. But, but um, I have to emphasize that you have to make sure that you always give an example. For example, I'm really energetic and a great communicator. You don't just say I'm a great communicator. You say I'm a great communicator. In fact, when I was in high school, I was um, I was chosen as one of the members of our debate team for representing our high school level. So regardless if it's just um, as a minimum accomplishment or in your eyes, those are accomplishments from way back in high school. If you are a new entrant to the industry, those are the things that we actually look for. How you did well during your um, college days or during even your high school days. So um, I am punctual and I, I received uh, an, an award for best in attendance when I was in uh, third year high school. So things like those. Know the 20 facts about you. What are your likes? So it can it can also show that, you know, for, for example, in my case, um, when uh, I would hire, when I was with uh, the Public Affairs Department, I looked at the talents of new entrants, whether she's a good dancer, a singer, or plays a musical instrument. Those are plus factors for me. Why? because there are always employee activities. There are always competitions in the company. And I'd like my young people to be part of those employee activities. So 
I am competitive in from the hiring process, from the screening process of applicants, those are some of the things that I look for. Therefore, those should form part of your 20 facts about you. Okay, so number eight, okay. So I mentioned a while ago, how do you uh, know the 20 facts about you? So these are eight powerful words jot it down please these are very important for online job interviews i'm going to use i'm going to um, give examples of how these powerful words are used during online job interviews so uh, i hope you're taking down notes okay number one is responsibility or responsible so this is uh, one of the things that uh, managers or recruiters are looking for in any job applicant, whether a new entrant or um, mid-level supervisory applicant or an executive. Uh, one of the most powerful words is responsible. So for example, you're going to say, uh, because you are, you are new in the, um, you can only get experiences from example from your internship from your membership in school organization so you can set those uh, you can say for example that i was uh, responsible uh, during my internship i was responsible for answering all uh, telephone calls in the office and i made sure that the the um, telephone uh, calls would be would, have, would um, be answered in three rings only. So see, there's already a measure that you were very conscious that um, the way to address customer uh, satisfaction, for example, is to be answered immediately. And that was your responsibility. And my supervisors were happy that uh, they were, uh, uh, that the calls, were immediately transferred to them so they could take care of it, of whatever concern the customer had at that time. So see how you can use these eight powerful words talking about your experience as well. Again, you're selling an experience. You are not just selling yourself. I am responsible can be said many times over, but if you cite an example of how you have shown that you are responsible is a good way to grab that job during a job interview. The next word is collaboration or collaborate. Okay, I'll cite an example. So even community work could form part of your online job interview. For example, I was part, um, I was part of the team that collaborated on um, the elimination of trash in our subdivision of of trash in our subdivision for example and in a matter of uh, in a span of three months we were able to hold uh, three uh, seminars with our uh, homeowners and um, from there from that time on Trash segregation was already part of our activity in the subdivision. So imagine that you were able to show how you um, are able to collaborate. And this is very important for uh, new applicants, the ability to do work with others. That's very important for us. Yeah, in the same manner that uh, initiative, Initiative is something that's so lucky nowadays. <laughs> I am reminded of, of um, some employees that you will have to tell them or spoon feed them. Uh, but, but during job interviews, uh, recruiters are able to see this already. But So if you can already cite uh, an example where you took an initiative, so the example, uh, in our class in philosophy, for example, I took the initiative of creating a case digest for the entire class and shared it with the with our professor 
and ask our professor if it could form part of the discussion so that we are all aligned. Something like that. So you are able to give an example of the things that you initiated in concrete uh, situations or experiences. Now, this is a very powerful word for any position that you are aspiring for. Entrant, mid-level, executive, lead. Leading need, it's not just concentrated on the work that you, or the work experience, but for example, in school, I led the, uh, I led the, um, for example, the debate team in uh, preparing topics that we could use for uh, practice during our, in our last semester of school. So the word lead was used in that example. Measure, 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 measure. In my example earlier, I said that it's very important that you're able to show or an example of how you measure. Okay. For example, um, we organized our school organized affair. And um, I, uh, as part of our, as part of my team, we made sure that we had a measure of success. And that measure of success was the number of people who would visit our booth. Our target was only 50 people based on the num average number of fair booth participants last year. We got the data from our uh, dean's office. So we targeted that only the we, we targeted for 50 people to visit our fair booth, but given the marketing uh, tactics that we employed, 85 people visited our fair booth. See, you made an example of the work that you did in college, showed how you at that time on how, has already been very conscious of performance indicators. So that's a good example as well. The next word is resolve. This actually shows how you are able to contribute. For example, in uh, resolving difficult situations. Um, for example, I'm going to give you the, it was, um, we, had, we had a challenging uh, situation in our, in my internship or in the client was uh, was annoyed with the way uh, documents were delivered to his or her house. Uh, they were quite in disarray. So I took the initiative uh, to take that, uh, to take that, that the responsibility from our team knowing that they were already packed with the, that they were already full of other work. So the result was I, I, I made sure that the packaging was, um, that it had like, uh, I put post-it notes, made a summary of each document that will go, that will be delivered to the client and the client became happy. So the issue was resolved in the, just by uh, making sure that there was a summary and the, or that the documents were organized before we gave it to the client. So see, that's already an example. Um, the next word is result. So you have to show a result of what you did. For example, um, there was a, uh, competition in school that would um, the top top blogger anon top uh, the students with the number the most number of followers online based on the um, one month content creation for Facebook would um, win for example, uh, cupcakes from our professor. So with my team, we created a marketing plan 
and we made sure that um, we invited the right people to our Facebook page. We engaged them and asked them questions on what would they look for in a Facebook page that carries this kind of topic. So the result was among the five teams in our class, we were we ranked first in terms of the number of followers and reach and likes and dislikes per post. So see, uh, it was a school activity, but you were able to show uh, the results based on the tactics or executions that your team did. So those uh, are examples. I would never always, always stress that during a job interview, look always for appropriate examples to show your competence, your skills, and that you are the right choice for the job. Okay, so we go to number five, practice with a friend. Just like what I said before, it's practice, practice, practice. Um, in my case, I did not have uh, a friend to practice with in the past, but I had my mirror. And uh, at the time, there was uh, there's no um, like phone or recording instrument. So at most, yata kami ni mam babes ang hawak lang namin nun ay yung mga tape recorders for interviews of people. So that was what I would do. I would record myself to show if I am speaking clearly, if I am answering the questions, uh, but it was just audio. It was not visual. So what I would do was face the mirror and practice answering the questions myself. But right now it would be good for you to practice, maybe not with a friend, but uh, maybe your mother, or your aunt or somebody who is um, a boss already in your family and you can practice with them. Okay, because again, practice makes perfect. Okay, eto, I'd like to emphasize this. <laughs> Did you know that one in 20 job seekers, only one in 20 job seekers sends a thank you letter after a job interview. I got this somewhere, but this is actually true. But the truth is 94% of hiring managers find post interview thank you emails appropriate. So it puts you a step forward against the other candidates. If you send a simple thank you letter, thank you, sir, ma'am, put the name of the person who interviewed you for accommodating me earlier for interviewing me for the position of it made the um, the our uh, interview um, made my uh, uh, our interview made me uh, resolved in being part of your organization and I think I'll be a good fit uh, for the position since ganyan. So then your greetings of good health and safety and then best and I hope to hear from you soon. So a simple thank you letter will go a long way. It will put you ahead of the other candidates. Okay, so those are my top 10 tips to stand out in an online job interview. Okay, we go now to the second question. What are the do's and don'ts in writing a resume? Your resume is not your is not an autobiography <laughs> so make sure that it's clear it's concise but it shows your skills your competencies and that you are the right person for the job Ako, i would always recommend that you flip your resume based on the requirements of the job so you don't just like send a standard resume in all the um, job applications. So if you are targeting a specific industry and a specific job for that matter, might as well, it's very important that you put the skills required for that position. Okay, number one do, include your LinkedIn profile in your resume. So it's very important. So you have your resume, but put there your LinkedIn profile. So copy that 
link and put it in your profile. That's very important nowadays. We look at that already, including the people you are connected in LinkedIn. Put soft skills. What do I mean by soft skills? Uh, these are usually uh, under the skills, interest, and uh, miscellaneous. So there's a portion of your resume that, that talks about that. So soft skills uh, involve your uh, writing, uh, writing skills, your um, ability to uh, talk with people. Uh, those are soft skills. Aside from your technical skills of, uh, for example, um, being able to use uh, MS programs or um, create websites. So it's very important that you uh, include your soft skills in your resume as well. Okay, so again, it's not an autobiography. Um, an ideal resume would have 475 to 600 words. So you can search online. Um, it's for new entrants. It's always one uh, one pager. If but if you have already work experience, a two pager would be enough. But not longer than 600 words, because you know recruiters they have to look at a screen. Uh, for example, for a job position, they screen as much as an average in our case 20 to 30. Uh, resumes uh, for one position alone. So it's very important that your resume will be will be scanned uh, immediately. And if it's too long, sometimes they're discouraged to look at all your uh, uh, indicators in the resume. So number four is include five or more metrics. That's why I told you um, you have to resolve, you have to show examples of uh, what you did so far, even even uh, work in internship, uh, work during your uh, college, uh, school, uh, your your school accomplishments, university accomplishments. They are acceptable during uh, to put in your resume. So, for example, you were a uh, dean's lister for three consecutive semesters in 20, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Those are already uh, metrics, okay? So, don't... Ano ba yung buzzword at saka yung cliche? Um, sa resume, you don't put, I'm a team player, I'm a good communicator, I'm a... Those are cliches and those are buzzwords which do not mean anything to a recruiter. What is important for us is for you to use those words in terms of experiences that you have already acquired um, in the past. So, ayaw namin ng mga ako po ay team player, na ako po ayaw ko po yun. So, yeah, don't put a baby photo. I saw a resume of, of somebody who used a high school photo ID in a portfolio. No, don't do that. Uh, I know it's hard you know, nowadays because it's locked down, but there are ways to get a professional photo. Uh, you have to invest in that. You have to have a professional photo for your resume. So please, please uh, don't put a baby photo. Ito pa. I remember this. I had to put this. Don't use paper with striking colors. I while 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 this will attract the in the um, interview the recruiter because it's a standout in the um, pile of resumes that he or she is going to screen. If the color is a striking green and the and the font use was colored white or it's a striking yellow with color black it's hard on the eyes so please don't use paper with striking colors and never ever ever submit without proofreading 
your resume. You can ask somebody to be what I call third eye. So, because if, for example, your one word, um, a typo error in your resume, that's already, that will already be excluded in the screening process. So, never ever submit without proofreading. So, in terms of resume, um, resumes and CVs, it will be better if, if I see your resumes and I comment on it because and then you adopt the you'll have to tell me for example what industry or what position are you applying for but in terms of your linkedin profile you have to put in a lot of information because the recruiters and do, and then be conscious of keywords if you are applying for a certain position look for the keywords in the job description that they posted and use it in your profile so that when the recruiters uh, look for the um, for a certain position. Your resume would be part of the pile. Okay, so that's very important. Okay, so number third. Oh, I'm on time. I'm always looking at my time too. So how do you dress to impress during a job interview? Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You don't get that in terms of a job interview. Okay. Why? Because the way we the way we dress affects the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way others react to us. Diba? Kaya nga meron tinatawag na outfit of the day. Diba? Because yun nga, it makes you feel differently. Okay. So in the same manner, when you are again, if I go back, when you do your first dates, diba? You do, you have to have your uh, you have to look good during your first day. So in terms of your job interviews, you have to observe proper grooming. And what do I mean by that? Make sure your hair is freshly washed and styled. So even if it's an online interview, I can tell if you did not take a bath with the oil dripping in your hair. <laughs> so mga anak, maligo. <laughs> you, have, you have to uh, make sure that your hair is washed, that you took a bath when you do your online interview okay if you have long hair this is for girls consider putting it up in a bun or ponytail actually pala not just for girls but even for men like now uh, right now there are men with uh, long hair put it in a ponytail too so kami in pr and advertising films we have no problems with men uh, men with long hair but if you are for example uh, a medical ally position, a nurse, for example, or a medical technologist, a respiratory technologist in hospitals, you have to look clean, properly groomed. So you have to have your hair cut. So that's part of proper grooming too. So never go on an online interview if you're aspiring for these positions with a, pon <laughs> with a ponytail. So for girls, if you wear a nail polish, make sure it's a subtle color. No reds, no fuchsia, no blues, no royal blues, no greens, please. Because like how you're seeing me right now, I use my hand gestures too. The recruiters also look at how you use your hands. For example, when you do your interviews. So do not wear uh, nail polish that are too striking. Then keep your nails trim so they look professional. So... <laughs> uh, wag mahaba yung mga kuko as much as possible because um, you know you're not going to a party uh, people will be expecting you to use the laptop and if, if your nails are too long I wouldn't believe that you can you can actually navigate your laptop without being disturbed or distracted with your nails okay take out any body piercings except for one in each ear so again, this is okay with if you are applying for PR uh, and agencies, but we are just one industry. So whether you are applying in construction, in the food industry, manufacturing industry, uh, telecommunication industry, please, please take out any body piercings. And then uh, again, if you look at my clothes, you have uh, even online, this could be seen. Uh, pet hair 
or other uh, like threads on your shirt can also be seen easily. So please uh, make sure that you have a lint roller to also clean your clothes because that's part of proper grooming. OK, and with that, I wish all of you a Godspeed. Uh, this is my standard um, uh, saying to everybody. It's my mantra for all those who are looking for work and those who are uh, in any situation. All the best, but uh, everybody, Godspeed in grabbing that job. And with that, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa kanilang lahat. Yan, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Louie, for that very insightful, very informative and inspiring talk. We learned a lot from you. Um, and of course, our students here are really excited to engage with you because of the questions that we have here. Miss Louie, there's a question from one of our participants, no? Okay. And uh, the participant and the student mentioned here, good afternoon, ma'am. What if I'm applying for a job in a hospital? What color or attire of attire should I wear? Pag hospital okay. setting daw po, or um, sector po. Oh, sige. What position muna? If you're hiring, if you are applying for an mm -hmm. HR position, it will be good to use these colors the blue but if you're applying for a medical allied position green would be nice because it is associated with safety and health yeah yan so that's uh, clear <laughs> that's clear po so kasi po no? i mean um, we are really uh, listening po kanina Yes, in the hospitals, for example, there's also finance, diba? there's also customer relations. So I would advise for new entrants, for examples in finance, uh, in operations, stick to the colors of blue because this is safe. If it's uh, for new entrants anyway, but if you are already in a mid-level or supervisory positions, then you can explore other colors. Yeah. Right. That's uh, noted po, Miss Louie. I think, of course, the understand the psychology of co the use of color no? yeah, and, and the how it affects our visual perception of a person. <laughs> and uh, it, of course, it affects also uh, the personality. You know? I mean, it can also show your personality as well. Thank yeah. you so much, Po. <laughs> Uh, Miss Miss Louie, there's another question from one of our interns dito sa Career and Placement Office, Miss mm -hmm. Miss Mary Angelou. She is mm -hmm. asking, what can you advise po to applicants who encounter straight up rude interviewers or recruiters? <laughs> rude? Oh, oh, I know. Because that's actually a test of how you would react. Mm -hmm. To the act to an actual work setup you know not all bosses or not all managers would be would have the same demeanor or calmness when they do their work so that's a test of how you would react so i uh as early as that you have to be prepared for those types of situations but usually recruiters really do that to show to be able to gauge how you're going to react so be prepared for those yeah so it's also a test of your character that's what you mm -hmm. mentioned though no? yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, parang, i think yeah. i think this is kind of i think for um call center positions they really do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes oh, nga. Parang it's really also telling you know the level of grit of this person from the from the get-go. <laughs> yes, Kung, uh, because yun, uh, di ba, yung mga call center representatives, for example, they they do a lot of client calls. So, it's very important to be able to gauge mm -hmm. the applicant, how is she going to react to a rude person? Mm. Yes. Makes sense, no? Make really makes a lot of sense, uh, Miss yes. Louie. And I think the yes. next question is related to this because it's another anonymous question. Mukang ayaw magpakilala ng mga participants, <laughs> <laughs> but I, we respect the the privacy, no, of our student participants. And uh, the, this question says, uh, "Good afternoon, ma'am. What's your advice for those who easily get uh, nervous, no, in an interview? Po? Like I think part of those would be yun nga po, the 
the very uh, straight up, very rude, or somehow um, <laughs> difficult to handle interviewers. <laughs> Oh, Aside from I that, agree. po, you know, nagiging nervous po lagi. So, what are your advice, though, po, to uh, maybe manage the nervousness? <laughs> ako, ano, ako, I breathe a lot. So, before any interview, for example, I would advise you to like walk around, pacify your heart, and then breathe. Just breathe. That's my. Some I know of a friend who who holds. A keychain. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that works for him. I mean, holding a keychain and then uh-huh. if he's stressed, then he presses on the keychain. So that works for him. But, but for me, it's really yeah, uh, no, I he think also, uh, uh, Miss Louie, it all, mm-hmm. correct. I agree. I agree. Yes. And it also shows in the facial uh, facial expression and the gesture, no, non-verbal uh, gesture or communication of the applicant when you're too nervous. Sometimes uh, you notice that there's no eye contact. Is that also a sign of nervousness? No, not looking no uh, straight yeah. to the eyes. <laughs> true, true, so, true, true. Yes. So in the same manner that it's an online job job interview, no. Well, for now, anyway, you have to always look at the camera. But if it's not, but during a face to face interview, na ko very important that you look the person straight in the eye because it shows honesty, sincerity. In, so you practice. You just practice it. Practice it with your mom, with your, with your brother, with your friend, looking straight in the eye. Mm. Yeah, interesting. And of course, that's part of creating connection and rapport you know, with the yes. interviewer. Yes. Thank you, Miss uh, uh, Louis, no, for clarifying. And of course, no, um, making uh, em- for the emphasis, no, for, uh, regarding the eye contact. Uh, another question here is, uh, if we ha- are asked about our salary expectations during the interview, how should we answer it, Miss Louie? <laughs> okay, number one, you have to research about the salary range for that position. Okay, you have to ask around. Ask your mm-hmm. friends, uh, ask your mom, ask your friends' moms, Google it in the internet. So you'll have an idea what's the benchmark for the salary for that specific position. So that when you are asked, you will know how to answer. Mm-hmm. So, and don't be, you know, don't be nervous or you have to also think that you are a valuable yes. asset to Yes, you don't say na, I'm a new entrant, so I'll just accept it. No, no, no. Y- you're, you have invested in your education. You have invested in mm. your experience already. You know what you can put in the job. So, negotiate. It's okay to negotiate. Yeah. Yes, sir, Rondel. Wow, that's the key word, no? negotiate. No? And that's yeah. part of the top 10 skills no, of uh, the 21st century, no? negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always like uh, providing a <laughs> win-win solution. Po, no? Because they're new entrants, uh, <laughs> they have no right. So interesting, po, Miss uh, Lupita. Oh, diba? Parang baka mamaya you're thinking that maybe because you are a new entrant, you have no right to uh, negotiate for your salary. Yeah. Number Thank one. You po, no? uh, <laughs> Miss Louie also, no, I think there's also a concern about being late in an online interview. <laughs> like, for example, po, according to one of our interns dito, uh, what happens po when you're late to an interview, but it's because of an emergency? Um, what do you mean an emergency? You have to talk to the recruiter, huh? You have to advise the recruiter that you have a problem. So it's good mm-hmm. that when you receive an email, for example, from a recruiter, um, <laughs> uh, yun, I think po kasi, no, sometimes no, there are a lot of factors to consider now in an online setup, like the internet connection, okay. also the availability of gadget and resources. Mm-hmm. Di ba po? So mm-hmm. I think are those something that we can use as excuse when we are late or we fail to attend our interview? That delay is acceptable nowadays, but you have to advise uh, you have to find a way to advise the recruiter that you cannot make it on time and that you will offer uh, an option. Because, for example, there were, uh, oh. diba? Parang you always offer, uh, mm-hmm. 
could we, uh, the, it's raining hard here, internet has been erratic since, and we got a notice. Yeah, from... no, I mean, uh, it's really something that we uh, would like to know, po, no? but yeah, I agree. But you po. don't just, I uh, know, but you don't just absent yourself from the actual interview. That's not that that's going to be that does not show your initiative, that does not show your discarte. Sabi kasi, di ba sa recruiters, tinitingnan din yung discarte. So, you have you will have to find a way to make it to the interview. Yeah. Okay ba, sir? Is my internet clear? <laughs> My apologies also, Miss Louie, you know, that I'm also having some internet connection <laughs> at this point. But. Medyo maulan po, eh, no? Opo. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's clear, you know. I mean, uh, it's really important to inform beforehand, po, no, the inter, the recruiter, the interviewer of your situation, so that uh, they can understand also that uh, there are some factors that cannot be, uh, we, I mean, beyond our control, real. Yep. Uh, Miss Louie, there's another interesting question, po. Yes. Um, hello, Miss Louie. I'm curious on how should we dress? Should we be open about our soji, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression in the workplace, po? Mm, um, depends. Is what that something that you oh. advise that we can be open uh, in terms of our dress code or the way we express ourselves? The depends again on the industry. If you are applying in our industry, that's PR and uh, ad agency, we have no problems with that. But for example, banking, banking remains very conservative in terms of their employees so you'll have to abide with that culture so that's why in banks when you when you apply to them uh, their colors are very muted so you'll have to remember that and um i wouldn't recommend for example uh, being in flashy colors when you are in your first level of interviews so or your uh, be on a safe uh, dressing so you can wear your blazers you can wear your shirts um, depends actually on the kind of organization that you're um, looking at and including your position the position that you're applying for but you know there are still conservative industries right now so wag muna wag muna Pagka new entrance, wag muna. Ayan, sir. Okay na ka, sir. Did I answer it? <laughs> Did I satisfy your, ano, your question? Hi, Sir Rondel. Tulyata. Yes, sir. Ano po tulyata si Sir Ron? Yeah, uh, hold on. Uh, Hintay-hintayin lang natin. Sandit lang. Mm -hmm. Sige. Parang ano... Meron ang mga questions dito. Uh, sige, um, let me read the questions. Um, naputol nga yata. Ha, huh, there you go. No new questions. Congratulations. Sandali ah. Hindi um, ang dami. Ito nga, dami, ang dami. So, if during an interview, I suddenly run out of words or that there are no thoughts running through my head after a question by the interviewer, what should I do? Anonymous. There you breathe, go. Breathe. Breathe. And breathe. Breathe. <laughs> yeah. Wag, wag huminga. Yan ang sa lahat. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And it's okay um, to tell the interviewer, uh, Mom, kindly give me a few seconds to think about your question. 
Ganun. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Um, and then just pause for like uh, five, five seconds or ten seconds. Just organize your thoughts. Oh, but and, ah, yeah. sorry, sorry. That's better than ano, ah, That's better than run ano, or, ano, just saying blunders. So yeah. If I may add, no, especially now that the interviews are online, no, pag biglang naputol or katulad yan, yun ang yare kay Ron, <laughs> biglang nawala. Don't panic, guys. If in the middle of the interview nag nawala, tapos you'll say you'll start cursing. Baka hindi mo alam naririnig ka ng interview. <laughs> true, true, true. Please, true. please, don't curse. It's just a glitch. Um, hindi yan ang hindi sapat para maging reflection ng personality mo yan at para ikasira ng binilda mo for the past 30 minutes, tapos nawalan ka lang ng internet, di mo alam na connect pala ulit, ano? tapos nagmumura ka na kasi hindi mo ma-connect, akala mo hindi ka nakakonect, and then na-capture lahat ng interviewer, oh, very bad. So, yeah, no, yun, mga, parang, mga reminders lang, no? And yes. then, good day, I have three questions. I wonder, mm -hmm. what educational background should be indicated po? From elementary po ba dapat? Do organizations you have in school has a bearing in the resume? And is it okay to put also creative skills, even if you're applying for accounting? Um, sa amin tertiary, di ba? You start with the tertiary talaga. So, there are some, uh, sinasama yung high school. For example, you're hiring for a local, um, in the provinces, they want to see where you graduated to in primary school. So, sa, sa probinsya yun. Kasi meron ka, akong mga, partis, mga nahawakan na na ganun, na they also look up where you graduated uh, uh, from high school. But uh, in Manila, we, yun nga, you just put your schools, uh, tertiary, so your university or your college degree. And then, him, oh, oh, wag na, wag na yung elementary, will be more yeah. interested. Use, again, no, diba, sinasabi natin, up to 600 words lang. So use those words wisely when you do your resume, kasi counted lahat yan. So might as well, don't use that. So, yung second question niya is uh, about organizations. Yes, they have a bearing, especially for new entrants. I'd like to see what organizations you were involved in because it will show much whether you can do teamwork, whether you have the initiative to do other. It will also show whether you can do multitasking because in a work setup, there's always that colatilia in your job description. Uh, perform other duties as may be assigned. <laughs> Minsan mas marami pa yon than the actual uh, duties and responsibilities. So yun yon. So you have to include those the organizations that you have been a part of, especially those organizations that you were an officer uh, of. You were at a level of an officer, and then what? Uh, for example. Uh, accomplishments your organization did that's that's a good thing on your resume and then is it okay to put also creative skills even if you're applying for accounting yes, yes. <laughs> those are soft skills <laughs> yes na yes yes na yes <laughs> yung, yung <laughs> kami, ah, we're a peer agency and um the we hired an accountant we hired an accountant and then she she put in her uh, skills in, she said she's a good dancer. <laughs> we hired her. I'm not kidding. We hired her. So, so right now, because that, that also shows that, you know, she's an accountant, but she's diverse. She has a diverse uh, range of talents. And right now she competes during our Christmas competition. So that also shows your diversity in terms of your skills. Yeah. So include Ayaw. that, include that, even if it's an accounting. You're a good so, talagang hindi niyo ako maka-hire kasi hindi, hindi nga ako nagsasayaw. So, Pero so, kumakanta ka. Magaling ka kumanta. <laughs> diba? So, when uh, nagpi-play ka ng musical <laughs> instrument, you, you put it there. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh. I mean, it, you can be an asset. Diba? Sometimes we ask for hobbies and ano, diba? Kasi um, we do yeah, I ask, yeah, I ask that. I ask that because, you know, many companies, they have sports events. Again, you are new entrants, so you have to make sure that you are ahead of the others. What can you offer that the others don't have? 
So may it be soft skills, may it be uh, driving. If you know how to drive, put it there. I mean, that's a skill as well. So that, uh, if you like hobbies, uh, you like playing basketball or you're into yung mga gaming, ganyan. So just put uh, Online gaming. Okay. Yeah. Asset yan. Ito vlogging. Ang nakikita ko ngayon, yeah. ano eh. May mga vlogs yung mga bata. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, uh, just an additional reminder, be careful of what you vlog also. And uh, what you post, what you vlog. Kasi part ng uh, pag-vivet ng tao or yung background research would be uh, through social media. So say for example, galit na galit ka sa globe ngayon dahil hindi ka, dahil intermittent ang signal mo, medyo may ay mura ka sa social media mo. Tapos after you graduate, nagtrabaho ka sa iba, tas lumipat ka, ang ganda ng opportunity, no? Um, promotion, I mean, career path, career growth. Pag-apply mo, yun ang nakita, nag-apply ka sa Globe because there's a very good opportunity. Eh, nakita yon. Parang four years ago, medyo minumura mo kami, ngayon nag apply ka, di ba? Parang, True. so please, please lang. Oh, yung mga tama. ganyan, be very careful. There's yeah. No tama, tama ka, ma'am. Tama ka, ma'am, babes. Talagang recruiters right now, even look at the Facebook pages. Instagram. Kaya Facebook. wag yung ano ay yung para mga lasing-lasing nyo. Ngayon pa lang, yung para mga lasing-lasing dun sa tanggalin nyo na yan because when you're applying for a job, talagang we vet, we, we use the social media platforms already. Mm-hmm. Yun. Yeah. So, but maingat Instagram. tayo ba? Maingat tayo. Saka ito, um, ito, after this, no, try nyo lang like i-google yung pangalan nyo, tapos tingnan nyo kung na ilalabas. <laughs> Oo. Yeah, that's true. Kasi, I, I always advise that because sometimes nagugulat ka, yung lumalabas yung worst pictures, yun, yun yung naka-public pala sa nakalimutan nyo i-private, di ba? So, yes. i-google nyo lang, i-google nyo lang ngayon, after this, ha, wag ngayon, after this, nandito pa kami eh, sorry. Yes. Uh-oh. So, I think we're down to the last question because yes. may 5pm meeting pa si Ma'am Louie, papatayin ako niyan. Um, good, uh, ito po, last. Um, Good afternoon, ma'am. What is your advice to those who lack experience, who doesn't have extracurricular activities and organization during college? Um, guys, lahat naman po ng bagong graduate, I mean, kulang pa sa experience, admittedly. So, pasok po, ma'am Louie, ano po ang advice natin para sa graduate? All, sa- of you, all of you finished internship, right? So, you put the experiences you had during your internship. So, pwedeng hindi school, pwedeng community-based. Kanina rin sinabi ko, if kahit nga lector commentator ka dun sa simbahan, ilagay mo dun. Kasi that's that's uh, part of your experience as well, di ba? So, yung, yung internship, kaya be very um, choosy also of the companies that you're going to uh, do your internship. Kasi kapag sa palagay ninyo, three days wala kayong ginagawa kundi magtimpla ng kape, madali namang lumipat ng kumpanya for internship. Kami, <laughs> our interns, o di ba, ma'am babes, in, no no sa akin yan. Kasi yun ang dapat na, di ba, yun ang dapat na uh, kailangan during your internship you learn, you are mentored. So, choose the company that you're going to do your internship. Yeah, thank you very much. And now we would like to turn over uh, the floor to Sir Ron, who is now back. And yes, alive. I'm back. Hi, Sir Ron. 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 Hi, Ma'am, uh, Miss Louie, rather, no, I mean, uh, there are a lot of things that we would like to ask still, but in the interest of time, I think we will just collect these questions from our uh, students, no, and of course, we'll ask you, uh, we'll also share with you these questions. Thank you so much, Pono. No? So there you have it. Apo. Uh, we officially conclude our pep talk today, but we would like to present this certificate of appreciation to our speaker. Let me read the text, no, of our um, appreciation, the certificate of appreciation. Yes, uh, you can see it on your screen now. Uh, let me read the text. Yes, Far Eastern University Career and Placement Office Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Ms. Uh, Maria Luisa Luis Sebastian for her valuable contribution as speaker during the pre-employment preparation talk webinar series titled Grab That Job, How to Be Successful in Job Interview, Resume Writing, and Proper Grooming given this 30th day of September 2021 at Far Eastern University, Manila, Signed by Maria Carmencita Suva Alfonso, 
the Director of FEO Career and Placement Office, and Generoso Pamitan Jr., PhD, Assistant Vice President for Academic Services. Ms. Louie, before we end the seminar, or webinar rather, are there any parting words, final pieces of advice, or final thoughts that you would like to share with our audience? No, I would like to congratulate uh, Mom Babes and you, Sir Rondel, and the rest of you guys. You're doing wonderful. You are doing this wonderful activity for our youth. And thank you, thank you for uh, always making me a part of this. As long, yun nga sabi ko, as long as my schedule permits, if I can help, if I can be of help, then just PM me anytime. Thank you. Thank Sobrang you. swerte ng mga tama raw. Sobrang swerte ninyo. Yes. Not all schools are doing this for their students. And I'm very, very happy for you. Godspeed. Yeah, thank you. Mas swerte sila dahil we have friends like you, Suki. Hindi lang sa online <laughs> mock interview with coaching. Pati rin sa pa webinar. So, yeah. I, and uh, thank you, Page One. Thank you po, Sir Ron Habal, of course. Miss Louie. Thank you so much po. Um, God bless po. Thank yes. you. Ron? Bye. Yes. At this juncture, yeah, we would Papa. like to thank again po Miss Louie for gracing the event. To our students in attendance, please do not forget to answer the online student evaluation form. And of course, we would like to uh, invite you again to our next pep talk this coming October 22. Uh, next month, pa yun, no? but uh, we would like to uh, prepare for that. Tam Netizens, Understanding Social Media Ethics. And um, for updates, please regularly visit the Career and Placement Office official Facebook page. And on behalf of the FEU Career and Placement Office, we would like to thank again our digital media partner, the Marketing and Communication Office for making this live webinar possible. Many thanks also our dear students, faculty members, and employees for joining us. We hope that you've learned a lot from today's pep talk. And as we end, may we invite everyone to join us in singing the FEU hymn. This again, your MC, Ron Gascon. Keep safe, everyone. Be brave. Tamaraos.